You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. At Fidelity, you'll always get a great value for your options trades. And with powerful investing tools that provide clear next steps, plus independent research and a wide range of investment types, we can help you make better trading decisions. Learn more about options trading with Fidelity at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. Good morning. Today is Monday, October 22nd, 2018. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Monday. First thing to know is Wall Street pointed to a higher open, pre-open. U.S. stocks were set to open higher as investors turned their focus on the latest batch of corporate earnings. Second thing to know today is Italy boosts European markets. European markets kicked off uh, the week with gains after Moody's kept Italy's sovereign rating stable instead of cutting it to negative. That helped calm investors' anxiety as it was seen reducing the likelihood of a further downgrade to junk status for now. Italy's FTSE MIB index was up around 1% in mid morning trade, with lenders such as Unicredit and Intesa San Paolo faring the best. Elsewhere across the continent, nearly all of the region's major bourses also enjoyed healthy gains following three straight days of losses, with most sectors in positive territory. Germany's DAX rose around 0.6%, while the UK's FTSE tacked on 0.5%. Third thing to know today is Chinese equities jumped the most in two years. China's stock markets rallied sharply to enjoy their best days since March of 2016 as Beijing's pledge of support for the economy and companies boosted appetite for riskier assets. The stimulus pledge comes after the release of weaker-than-expected GDP data late last week, which revealed the slowest quarterly growth since the 2009 financial crisis. The blue-chip CSI 300 index jumped 4.3%, while the main Shanghai Composite Index added 4%. The strong rally helped lift most other markets in the region. Fourth thing to note today is the dollar and treasuries hold steady. Away from equities, the dollar was little changed as the U.S. Treasury yield held steady, taking a breather from last week's push higher. The U.S. dollar index, which measures the greenback strength against a basket of six major currencies, was last at 94, or, excuse me, 95.47. In the bond market, yields on the benchmark 10-year Treasury stood at 3.2%. In economic data, the Chicago Federal Reserve will release National Activity Index figures at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. The highlight of this week's data releases will come Friday, when investors get their first look at third-quarter economic growth figures. And the fifth thing to note today is Brent oil rises back above 80 bucks. In commodities, oil prices were higher to start the week as looming U.S. sanctions on Iran, the third largest oil producer in the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, 
are widely expected to lead to a tighter market. The sanctions, which from November 4th will include Tehran's oil exports, are being reinstated after U.S. President Donald Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal earlier this year. Our second story today is from CNBC.com and adds a little more color to uh, something we've talked about so far. China's China stock surged more than 4% extending Friday's rally. As mentioned, Asia-Pacific markets rose on Monday as major Chinese indexes led more than 4%. The Shanghai index added 4.09% to close at around 2654.88 earlier in the day. Elsewhere, the Shenzhen composite gained 4.899% to close at about 1325.73. The moves followed Friday's rally in Chinese stocks as authorities took steps to support the market after the release of weaker-than-expected GDP data. One market observer, however, voiced skepticism over the recent rally in mainland Chinese stocks. Eventually, at the end of the day, fundamentals will still rule. Basu Menon, vice president of group wealth management at OCBC uh, Bank, told CNBC's Street Signs on Monday morning. Menon pointed out that there were lingering concerns over Beijing's trade war with Washington. It doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon, he said. You see a rebound today, but does it mean that the markets have turned a corner and you know will hit higher? I'm not sure. I don't think so, Menon said. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 eased, uh, erased earlier losses to close 0.37% higher at 22,614 spot 82, while the Topics Index gained 0.15% to end the day trading at uh, 1695.31. South Korea's Kospi gained 0.25% to close at 2161.71. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index rose 2.22% in afternoon trade. Our final story today is from uh, Reuters.com. ICE's new Houston crude futures contract begins trading. Intercontinental Exchange, Inc. said its new Permian West Texas Intermediate crude oil futures contract, deliverable in Houston, Texas, will begin trading on Monday. The trade month will be December, and the contract will be deliverable at Magellan Midstream Partners LP's East Houston Terminal, ICE said in a statement. On Monday, ICE will list 36 months of flat price Permian WTI contracts and calendar spreads, uh, as well as intercommodity spreads for the Houston contract versus Brent and the Houston contract versus WTI. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, October 22nd, 2018. 18, excuse me, your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Trade smart and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Options News Rundown. To learn more about these stories or any other developments from the world of options, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's live advantage group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 